Hello everyone and welcome back to Unbound Learners Pre-K. My name is Nina. What's your name? It's so nice to meet you. Let's get started with our good morning song together. Stretch your arms out like airplane wings and fly to one side, over to the other side, fly back to the middle, and now take your airplane wings into a big circle out in front of you like this. Bring the circle up over your head and stretch to one side, over to the other side, one more time up at the top, and bring the circle back down and let's sing together. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Circle Time. Before we get started, we have to do three things quickly. First, turn on our listening ears. Next, let's put on our thinking hats. And the third and final thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts like this. Boom, 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 boom. So let's double check. Our listening ears are on, our thinking hats are on, and our hearts are all warmed up. And now let's get started. Let me get my pointing stick. And first, let's go over the date. We're going to start off with the month, which is right up here. Do you know what the month is? June, you're right. The month is June. Today is June 23rd. Let's move the chip over from yesterday. Yesterday was June 22nd, and today is June 23rd, 2021 or 2021. We have a lot of counting today, as you can see, the month of June is almost over. Let's use our counting fingers and see how many days we've had so far in the month of June. Let's give them a stretch to warm them up. I also think that because we are doing so much counting, we should take a deep breath before we begin. Let's breathe the air in through our noses and out from our mouths, like this. Let's do one more time. We have our counting fingers ready. We took a deep breath and now let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. We counted 23 days that we've had in the month of June. Now let's sing the Days of the Week song. How many fingers do we hold up for this next song? Will you show me? Seven. Because we have seven days in the week, we hold up seven fingers like this. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Let's travel down to the bottom of the chart and go over the days of the week together. I'm going to give you the sound that the day starts with, and if you know what day it is, you can tell me. Let's see. Yesterday was t. Tuesday. That means that today is w. Wednesday. And tomorrow will be th. Thursday. Let's go back. Will you sing today is Wednesday with me? It goes like this. Today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday all day long. Today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday all day long. 
Up at the top of the chart, we have the season. Do you know what the new season is? Summer! That's right, friends. It's summertime where I live. And at the bottom of the chart, we have a picture of the weather. So let's sing the weather song together. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? Can you tell? Can you tell? So yesterday afternoon, the rain stopped. And today, the sun is poking out from behind the clouds. When I look outside of my window, it's mostly cloudy, but I can see the sun trying to poke through a little bit. My temperature chart is on warm because it's a warm day today where I live. Warm and mostly cloudy. What about you? What do you see outside of your window? Thanks for sharing the weather with me. Now let's move on. This week, we have been talking all about this uppercase or capital letter. This letter makes two sounds. Will you tell me the short sound that the, this letter says? Ah, ah. And what about the long sound? What does that sound like? A. This is an uppercase or capital A. And now let's see what's inside of the letter box today. Inside of this box, I have something that starts with the letter A. A. Here's your first clue. This is a type of a symbol. This symbol is used to show direction. Hmm. This one's a little bit tricky today. Let me show you what it is. Do you know what this is called? This is called an arrow. An arrow is a type of a symbol that is used to show direction. So when the arrow is pointing this way, I'm showing that direction. When it's pointed to the top, the direction is up. And if it's going down, the direction is downward. Arrow starts with the letter A. A. This is how you write a capital or uppercase A. A. One more time. And what about this number? What number is this? Four. That's right. Let's hold up four fingers together. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Four. Now let's count to the number four using the large bead frame. This week, we are going to be counting to the number four using the large bead frame. So we are going to be counting the green beads, which are units at the top. Let's count the number four together. One, two, three, four. Four units. We have something else to count and it's inside of the box. Today, I have four rocks. These small rocks are called pebbles. And as I count them, I'm going to line them up across the top of the box so that you can count them with me. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Four pebbles. Because we have been talking all about oceans this week, that is also our sign for the week. Do you remember how to say ocean in sign language? Let's do that together. Ocean. Just like humans, some sea animals like dolphins, seals, and whales have lungs inside of their bodies 
to take in oxygen. That means that they have to come up from the water to take a breath of air. However, fish do not have lungs. Instead, they have gills. But fish need to breathe oxygen as well, but just in a different way. Unlike dolphins, seals, and whales, fish do not need to come up from the water to breathe oxygen. Instead, they stay under the water and they use their gills to get the oxygen that they need. But how does that work? How do fish get oxygen from under the water? So as a fish swims under the water, water comes into the fish's mouth and goes out of the gills. Fish gills are made from soft tissue and act just like a filter. As the water travels through the gills, the oxygen is pulled out and then sent throughout the body of the fish. Pretty cool, huh? Would you like to see how that all works? I'll show you. Today's work is going to demonstrate how fish get oxygen underwater by using their gills. So for this work, you're going to need two clear jars or glasses. One of them is going to be a mixture of ground coffee and water. There's no need to heat it up. All I did was add about a tablespoon of coffee grounds to about a half of a cup of water and I gave it a little mix like this. You're going to keep the second glass empty and then you're also going to need a rubber band and a coffee filter. So the coffee filter is going to represent the fish gills and the coffee grounds are going to represent the oxygen that's inside of the water. Now remember, in order to breathe, the fish need to take the oxygen out of the water by using their fish gills. So first I'm going to take my coffee filter and I'm going to put it on top of the empty glass. And I like to press it in a little bit. I don't want it to be too tight. So use your fingers and you can gently press it in a little bit and then take your rubber band and put it around like so, so that the rubber band holds the fish gills in place. So the fish gills are the coffee ground, are, are the coffee filter and the oxygen is the coffee grounds. So I'm going to pour the water onto the top of the coffee filter and I'm going to wait a little bit. So underwater the fish will open their mouths and the water will come into their mouths and the water will go out of their fish gills and as the water travels through the fish gills the oxygen is pulled out. So I can see that the water is starting to drop through the coffee filter. But I notice that the coffee grounds are staying at the top. So the oxygen is staying and getting pulled out while the water travels back out of the fish gills. If you look closely, you can see that the water is dropping out but the coffee grounds, the oxygen, is staying. Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. So as you're completing today's work, you want to make sure not to let the coffee mixture sit for too long. Otherwise, the coffee will completely dissolve. Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a big thumbs up and find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. We have one more song to sing before we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.